Welcome to Carlos and Lisa. I'm Lisa Remillard. And I'm Carlos Amesco. It's nice to have you with us. You know what? what? Hard to believe. Here we go again. It's back to school time. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, no. As kids are getting ready to go back to school in the next couple of weeks, there is plenty for parents to think about and worry about when it comes to their child's house now that they've had this lovely summer. Yeah. Now, now things are starting to get serious. This, this is when I used to go, ah, I can put my kids <laughs> in school. I have a life. <laughs> I've got like four hours. I can do nothing but just play and then go back to them, you know? Right. Yeah, but this is this is an important time. You got a lot of a lot of things gotta get back to school. Outfits, lunch pails. I mean, did well, we even get, did kids even use lunch pails anymore? I don't know. I had a I had an awesome lunch pail. Yeah. But I had a Will uh, Rogers lunch pail. I bet you had I Will did. Rogers. I had She-Ra. Of course I did. <laughs> um, no, no, no. But like, but I know my my parent, my mom friends are all talking about how you know their kids are on their kind of summer schedule, so yeah. they're kind of staying awake till whatever hour they want and yeah. kind of waking it's up leisurely. They want, but now, no schedule. yeah. Now with school comes the schedule. So how do we get everybody back in the system? Ready for school. Start. You have to be like a drill sergeant because totally. you have to really get them back into order, and it's not easy. And kids will fight you every step <laughs> of the way. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to. I don't want to go to school. I don't sleep. want to have breakfast now. I want to have breakfast later. No, we have to have breakfast now. Or you're not going to go to school, with, right. with, and then you're going to be hungry. And the, you know, all that. All those. All things. those discussions that you've got to have with them. All right. So we asked um, our friend, Dr. Avital Harari, to come in and talk about all the things you need to be doing with your child. Now, starting like yesterday, yeah. right? Yeah, Hi. Hi, 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 Amitabh. Hi, Amitabh. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Okay, so health-wise and medical-wise, now with this transition from summer into fall, what do we need to be doing? What's the first thing that a parent should be doing? Yeah, so there's a few things that you want to think about, you know, especially as a mom and my kids starting, you know, preschool and kindergarten. You know, there are some things that you want to think about in terms of their health for the upcoming nine months mm -hmm. or nine to ten months. So. A few things are their nutrition, their exercise, um, some, their sleep habits, mm -hmm. the germs that they're about to be exposed to. <laughs> right. Um, a few other things that we talked about. Yeah. So, I mean, I, one of the things I remember telling my kids to do a lot of was to wash their hands, and I was really uh, all about that. Like, just you know, you're gonna the kids are gonna have sniffles, and you're gonna have all. But if you just wash your hands, you'll be you'll be okay, and is, that's good advice, right? Yeah. He's doing so it right. <laughs> very important to kind of teach them. It's hard sometimes with the little ones that don't really listen Understand. to you. Understand, yeah, they don't get when it. they're two or three years old. A lot of times I will just wash their hands on their way out of school, even though that doesn't really prevent the germs from getting into them during the school process. But if your child's old enough to really understand, you can kind of explain it to them. I mean, the way that most cold viruses, for example, transfer is by touching something that somebody just touched. They touch their nose and their snot and it just kind of gets on something and the child will touch that and then <laughs> uh -huh, touch their face or eat something or drink something. Oh, so boy. if they can think about not doing, not or washing their hands before lunch or before they touch their face right. in any way, that's that's great. That's a great way to prevent things from, from transferring. All right, let's talk about sleep habits and also social media habits for the kids because I think during the summer those things get very lax mm -hmm. because you're not on that strict school schedule. So how do you introduce the schedule back in? Yeah, so sleep hygiene is super important, especially if you want them to learn well. Mm -hmm. I mean, their brain is going to function much better if you're sleeping at least eight to ten hours a night. And it gets interrupted if you're on a device right before you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So a, a good suggestion is to make sure that all the devices are kind of in a common area, not in the bedroom. And this goes for people all the way up to 18 years of age. I know that a lot of the older kids are using so, um, social media and also devices for their homework, mm -hmm. but it's important to kind of get that away from them. Within an hour of sleeping, they really shouldn't be looking at a screen. because Why really is that? There's something about the blue screen for the, the devices, that, the blue light, mm -hmm. yeah, that will affect the way that they sleep at night. And so they'll have interrupted sleep or, or their sleep is not deep enough and they'll wake up tired and um, just not productive for the following day at school. So really that should start, you maybe even start doing it now before school starts so they get into the habit of sleeping um, with good sleep habits. So eight to 10 rhythm. hours. Eight yeah. to 10 hours. At least. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, yeah, the circadian rhythms are really interesting because in other parts of the world where devices aren't as prevalent, for example, when I've traveled, you see people getting ready to sleep 
So there, there's like activities that they do, mm -hmm. whether it's having just a conversation with somebody, uh, candlelight, lower level yes. lights, even coffee. The people have coffee at night and then go to sleep. But I, I mean, I don't suggest that that's no, probably a good that's thing. That's the thing you should super but, avoid. But, <laughs> but, I, but yeah. I, I see that if I mean, if you give yourself an hour or so to prepare for sleep for yes. your children, you know, like uh, my kids when they were little used to watch TV until it was bedtime. That's not necessarily no. a good thing. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely spot on. I mean, this is what I do with my kids every night too. We have kind of a sleep, um, what is it called? Like, like reading prep, to them, like preparation prep time. Prep almost, yeah, yeah, right. We read books. We, you know, brush your teeth. We play. We try to stop the television anytime, you know, within an hour of sleeping. And and I think that's a great idea. It's also a really good connection that you can have with your children. It's a really special time that everything kind of winds down, and everybody should sort of not be jumping off the walls. Right. You know, right. it kind of. Uh, I, I think that's amazing that you've seen that in other countries because I think that's what we should practice here and yeah. we probably, most parents probably do, but if they don't, it's a great idea. Okay, two other things I want to make sure we get to. Yeah. One is vaccines mm -hmm. or, you know, kind of shots or whatever it is health-wise that kids show, you need. Know that, right? I know, that's why I want to just kind of <laughs> touch on it briefly because the sure. state of California has some rules, Yeah, right? absolutely. The, it's, it's the law in California that there's a minimum amount of uh, vaccines that each child has to get before starting kindergarten mm -hmm. in the public school system. And it's super important. All your children should be up to date on all their vaccines, um, maybe even above and beyond what is recommended because it really will prevent them from getting the communicable diseases. These are diseases. People can die from these diseases. And if you don't get the vaccine, you're at much greater risk, especially now with the epidemic that is happening with measles. It really is important yeah. to get vaccinated. And then the last thing real quickly before we go is the exercise part of it mm -hmm. because now that you know the summertime they've been running around playing and now they're going to go back to school and it's homework time and it's but we also have to make sure that they're still getting their exercise yeah so exercise and nutrition is very important and i think that a lot of the schools are kind of integrating this physical activity as part of their day but it's really important to continue that because this childhood obesity is really a problem in mm -hmm. our country is about 17 percent of our youth are in the obese category which is crazy crazy so it's, uh, it's something yeah. that you think about in terms of an adult epidemic but the kids epidemic is just as scary and when you form these habits as a child they continue on into your adulthood and obesity is uh, just higher risk for diabetes heart disease cancers all sorts of things that really is a problem for for people and their health so trying to get those habits on early so nutrition mm -hmm. making sure they're eating the right amount of foods making sure your your lunch that you're giving your child is nutritious not doritos and you know peanut butter and jelly sandwich mm -hmm. you know try to think about what you fruit and things that you can put into your child's mm -hmm. lunch that really will help them nutritionally and to grow but not give them excess calories or empty calories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then just uh, just make sure you're encouraging exercise so that they don't fall into that category. Well, you know, as a former uh, father of young children who went, went off to school, I will say this. Enjoy them while they're little <laughs> because they're little problems. When they get bigger, bigger problems. <laughs> Big problems. But let me just say, going to school is one of those adventure things. You, you make it into an adventure, and your children will reflect that attitude going to school. So uh, a lot of parents like worry their children too much about what's about to happen. Instead, just make them uh, enjoy the experience and have fun, and don't worry too much about all that other stuff. You're the adult. Be the adult. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. I did want to just mention one other thing just to be aware of, especially in the older sort of middle age, the uh, high school kids mm -hmm. is really their just mental health. Start oh. thinking about you know, social media and their effect and its effect on your child. See if they're withdrawn. Talk to your children. Sometimes they won't talk to you, but kind of make sure that you're kind of engaged with them and really connecting with them because it's easy to just have life pass you by and then per and there's a lot more anxiety and depression and even teen suicide rates are up so really important there's Pay the, or the organization for social media there's all sorts of things that can help you um, uh, with the safety uh, in regards to the way they are and so that's I think something else to uh, Dr. Avital Harari thanks so much Thank great, you great for advice coming. great to have you here